shot now. Okay. Anyhow, this is all. Here. And this is not a spring chicken today. We are talking about 3D. Uh, 3D, yeah. Supposedly, Toshiba is doing something that nobody else can do in the industry, which is to create a television set that will show 3D without 3D glasses, which nobody can really do because. Uh, what happens is, you know, you wear the glasses because the signal that's sent out has to be translated into another form. These fuzzy glasses do it. And if you put them on, they look like sunglasses. Uh, you want to watch ordinary programming through a sunglass. Well, see, here's the part that, because we've been sitting here discussing because we've been following 3D. And I thought, well, you know, we could do 3D me, yeah. right? Which, you, which doesn't require 3D glasses, no. but that's everything had to be converted to that. Yeah. But they're talking about it. They're talking about, about a signal. A signal, uh, basically, to a big. Uh, and, okay, the way these things, uh, all the glasses that are coming out for the 3D sets are active shutter glasses. Right. And they're all proprietary because it means they'll only pick up, the, they'll only be able to see the programs that are designed to be shown, like on the uh, Sony and the uh, Hitachi mm -hmm. and the JVC. And then you have to get a different set of glasses. Actually, you can't watch that, I think. But, uh, um, or, you know, but uh, what they're talking about is a system that you'll be able to see all the 3D that is out there, including the 3D on the DVDs, which isn't compatible with anything in the movie, with anything on television yeah. at the moment. You see, here, here's part of it. Is they currently are making TVs that will take a 2D signal, actually... Well, actually, they'll make it 3D. They'll, they'll, they'll no. take a 2D and okay. make it into a 3D. There's a company, mm -hmm. a company that's basically doing it as Tridec or something. But it's basically been around for a long time. It's just, uh, they're, di but they're using computers to translate, make, make every single thing you have 3D. Yeah, but don't, okay, well, let's back up for a minute. Aren't there, the TVs were up converting. Remember they were talking about that yeah. at CES? Or actually not CES, more at NAB. Yeah. Being able to do that. Yeah. At CES they were talking about 3D TVs. And at, but, and at the cable show they were talking about it. So I sat there through the thing. Here, here's a piece of advice that it was every television set at that time made in the world would show 3D. But that won't be the way tomorrow. Because yeah, with the so active show glasses you you'll only be able to see the 3D that is designed for the television system that you're watching off of. Well, see, because part of the key points was a, a TV that could, well, actually any TV could show 3D, yeah. right? And so being able to show 2D as well as 3D on the television system. Yeah. So part of it is, I didn't think it was, I mean, I thought it was cool, but I thought people already could do that. Well, they already can, but they don't, um, okay. The people, what she was okay, about. we were listening to the people, and I wanted to keep one of the addresses. He said specifically, but it is the television manufacturers and the consumer electronics industry that is driving 3D. It is not the consumers, nor the producers. I can guarantee you, we turn out 20 minutes of 3D a day that very few people watch. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a pain in the ass to do. I mean, we, okay, for instance, um, I, I, I 3D'd a green screen for the first time yesterday. Oh, God. You know, it added like another no, you, hour. you did it before. No, I 3D'd a 10, I 3 d old cam yesterday with a green screen. Okay, so when you take something from 2D to 3D, yeah. right, for example, when they do the movies, how much does it add to the cost? Uh, it, it, it ups the production time by 30% and the cost by at least a quarter. Okay, so that's one of the reasons you don't see it happen more often, like if it could happen in the TV sets, it makes it a whole lot easier for a lot of people. Yeah. Right? The people, mm -hmm. but, but the trick is... Um, like I, we, I went to, actually it was at CES, I guess it was, or it must have been CES when we were showing a brand new 3D set, 3D things, and I was, I, I got in trouble because I, you know, I, I was telling, just sitting here talking to some of the other reporters, said, that's a nice, you know, it's a picture, a picture on top of a picture. They've taken the PIP and just played them, who told you what you're we doing? I said, that's proprietary information. <laughs> And I said, it doesn't take a genius. It's a PIP picture. Because they just set their, they just, they just take the things well, that want, and then you get the double image. Well, part of it is because Old Cam came from an animation background. Yeah. It really makes it really, in cinematography, I mean, it's really easy for you to spot it when you take a look at it. I've been fired by some of the best people in the business, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, I can tell when I look at how it's done. I'll sit there and look at something, and then, 
It's the same thing as I got in trouble about three years ago at the Shiva's press conference when I'm designing the recording unit. I, you know, and the guy, well, where did you get that information? That information is not supposed to be public. And I said, well, I just drew it from what he was saying. It's on the back of the press release. They gave everybody to come in the room. But I sketched it with my pen as I'm doing it. And he's talking about it because it didn't take a genius to figure it was a, it was a, you know, a dual player did Blu-ray on one side, high def on the other, which the sandwiches are what they should have done. They just sold more sandwiches. Mm -hmm. you know, I, but um, you look at stuff. I mean, I, I'm talking um, six, 60 years ago, there was a program called Winky Dink and Me that basically did 3D. Mm -hmm. What happened was all the kids, they ordered out these little things from, uh, uh, from, the, from the show, mm -hmm. They put them on the TV set, and they basically, um, you know, it was sort of like, you know, uh, sunglass stuff like this, except it was like a quarter inch thick, and the static electricity kept in the set. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, they'd have figures that weren't complete, you know, and you sit there and fill the figure. That's in. pretty cool. And it gave you the 3D look because you were drawing the 3D thing on the screen. I think that's really cool. And we saw a person who was a, uh, actually, it was. Uh, when it was last year at the uh, Consumer uh, Product Association thing, where they were showing the gel cells for cell phones. Mm -hmm. You could use the cell over it, you could see 3D on it. Oh, Consumer Electronics Association Industry Forum. Yeah. You were one of the presenters. Yeah, one of the presenters was showing that. And I and we were talking about, well, they said they, they it becomes cost prohibitive when you get it larger. Mm -hmm. Well, it was larger at one time. But they somehow lost the ability. It's a simple. Okay, you want to do make you want to be able to show 3D. You simply do a thing that with elect, elect, uh, electrostatic adhesion. You simply take the thing out. You put it in front of it, and it attaches to the set. You got a 3D screen for everybody. You don't have to have glasses. Or you do the second method. You have a little thing that comes down the top of the TV set. It comes down over the front of the TV set and rolls back up. That's a 3D screen. But experts said last night, well. If it was as easy as the Siva says, JVC, Hitachi, Sony, and Samsung, they said, well, Samuel, who rips off everybody, that's what the guy said, would have had it out before the Siva did. I was watching the business news. No, I mean, one of the, okay, one of the reporters of the business mm -hmm. news said, you know, he said, young lady, you have to understand something very important. Before I got into the business news, yeah. I was in technology. I was an engineer. I, I was a, tele, a telecommunications engineer. That can't be done. I can guarantee you what they're saying can't be done. Because everybody, okay, they're going to flood you with everybody. The, the, the spectrum is going to be clouded. The question is calling it the cloud. Now. It's going to be clouded with Toshiba 3D, with HP 3D, with Sanyo 3D, H, uh, LED, I mean L, LCD 3D. Uh, everybody's got their own system, but the Toshiba is going to be able to handle it all. How? Well, see, part of it is, is you can watch 3D on TV yeah. right now, and you can watch it without the active shutter glasses. You can yeah. watch it without the other ones. It just means it's a blurry picture. Yeah. So the Anaglos 3D, which is what we use all the time with it, which is the blue and the red. Yeah, it's okay, simple. Is we use that because it's the most readily available because we also don't think that everybody's running around with these glasses even though we have no. it. Okay, these and glasses <laughs> run about 10 bucks a shot. And then how many people are going to go that and get $10 a shot at these glasses? Because I mean, like, I was talking to a person the other day in a event we went to, the camera operator, camera operator, and he, we were talking about 3D, and, and I'm telling him, and he said, yeah, it's going to cost you. The people that design the system don't have mm -hmm. children. He said, oh, yeah, because he said, this is what's going to happen with your glasses and the kids get in a fight. Yeah. You know, you lose $125 worth of glasses in about 10 seconds, when, and then, you know, oh, here. But you know what? <laughs> yeah. I think it's a... <clears throat> I think it's a whole lot easier on the equipment side to do it than yeah. on the production side. Oh, yeah. Because on the production side, there's a couple ways. One is you have 2, 2D and you convert it to 3D. Yeah. The other is you use 3D equipment. Yeah, which is mm -hmm. basically two cameras or, that are identical with identical lenses mounted side by side, two inches apart from the center of both cameras. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the difficulty with that is that, that you can't zoom in and out with the cameras. They got the fixed focal links. You can hook machinery up to it, which I saw being done, which basically moves both cameras back in and out. That's that's like another twenty five, three thousand dollars for the equipment. Mm -hmm. They have uh, Panasonic has got a piece of equipment coming out 
which was supposed to be out last year, which basically one is two cam two cameras they with very bad with low zoom ratio, low focal length, and doesn't do much. Hey, stuff. they have a school on it. Yeah, and coming out in a week or two. The two cameras are bolted inside a shell, and that's the three D. It costs you twenty five thousand dollars, I think, for the camera, and like another fifteen thousand for the editing equipment. Mm -hmm. Then the second method, I think, the same company, Panasonic, is going to have. A, they're, once again, they're bringing out an old camera, and they're going to have a 3D lens that fits over it to split your picture up into so, a catagraphic. And if you're wondering, it's like, well, this is newer technology or new technology, why would we say it's an old camera? Because it's old technology. Mm -hmm. It's not new technology. I, I tell people, I, mm -hmm. most of the people that talk about 3D have never worked in 3D. I was, I worked on uh, the charge of, I can't, is it a Powder River? I think it's Charge of Powder River. I worked on the uh, House of Wax, and I worked mm -hmm. on the um, uh, Gorilla at Large. Those were three, you know, three D things. I mean, uh, uh, they were really bad. I mean, bad. The technology <laughs> we're talking of technology is basically the same since the I think 1927 they created three D, mm -hmm. and actually three D had been done by the Lumiere brothers uh, 40, 30 years earlier.